Hey, Sneaky Linux back tonight, and tonight we're looking at RIP Linux, or RIP Linux, but I prefer RIP Linux. This is the screen you get when you first boot into the system. The live CD I'm doing it here from, not from a installed one. Just tells you a few bit how to install some stuff, and as you can see, it's very bare. That's quite a small download, but it packs quite a punch. If you just go to Setup, after we right-click the desktop, here you can see the amount of stuff here. It's packed full of stuff. Get the latest Flash Player, latest Firefox, latest Opera, latest Java, etc, etc, etc. Plenty and plenty of stuff for you to play with. I'll go down a little bit more just to start with, then we'll do a few bits and bobs with it. As you can see, we can show our memory into space, so we're going to do that. Have a look up there. Look, there's my RAM, how much I've used with the file system, etc, etc. Dot blocks, I can go on and on just tells you all about what I'm doing. So that's cool for me. So we'll click on OK. We'll right click desktop again. And we're going to go to setup. Now because the internet's not pre-configured we have to do this. And as far as I know this is only for a wired connection. And as you can see that took about five seconds and now we're connected. So should we use it now? Oh no, no. We'll go down the bottom first. You've got a invisible bar down the bottom. So when you go down there, it pops up. You can add workspaces if you want to, or if not, and you can make it fully viewable if you want to. So we're going to go straight to Firefox. And that was really quick, because that's how long it took. Now I thought it was going to be an old one, but no, it's 3.5. But as you know, you would need to upgrade this to 3.51, although that now needs an upgrade due to a hypothetical flaw, apparently. We'll go into that another time, I think, but they'll probably fix it by then and we won't have to. So we'll go to RIP Linux in Google, we'll go to the home site, it's not actually a home site, it's a bit of a hosting site, so that's no problem, it's nice and basic, but that's all you need really, because that's all it wants to do. Now you get a choice of different ISOs here, you got one without X, one with X, one for 64 bit, one for 32 bit, one for network boot, one for USB boot, <gasps> the list goes on, one for Windows, etc, etc. So there's plenty of stuff here for you to download. So if you've got Vista or XP, you just download the zip, no problem. Unky dory, like it already. Now I've been playing with this for a few days now, and the options are enormous if you want to recover a bad system. Which is what we really want to do most of the time, isn't it? With this sort of thing. I mean, years ago we used to use Gnobix. That was the, the big man on the street. But nowadays it's not. There's lots of other little utilities out there you can use. Now I'm going to stroll down here a bit more. As you can see, there's loads of burners here as well. So if you have got a dead system, you can get the stuff off it really quick before it goes completely up the wall, shall we say. And this is a bit that really made me laugh. Non-graphical browsers. Now this took me back, way, way, way back, into the day, dark, dark days of 33k modems, etc, etc. It's basically a type and touch browser, so to say. I'm done. I was quite surprised to see it here, that's why I'm a bit gobsmacked. But basically, it's just a, a, what you see is as what you get. There's no uh, pictures whatsoever. It's all in text. This is what we used to get many, many moons ago. And you can still use it now, and it's still really quick. And if you only want to look up text anyway, why not use it? Alright, some of the, lot of the pages we go to nowadays are full of pictures and graphics, but hey, give it a go. It was fun. Anyway, back to the real world, shall we say. And we'll go up to somewhere else. Where should we go? Where should we go? Applications, right. Partition tools. Look how many we got there. We've got F disk, CF disk. Ghost for Linux. Ain't seen that for a while. Should we give it a click? Yeah, why not? Ghost for Linux is exactly what it says. Ghost for Linux. It's a, not a Norton ripoff, but it's very similar. I'm not going to open it because I'm actually running from disk and there's nothing on the hard drive anyway. It's just a little open one I've got. But if you want to run it to get the system off, no problem. Back to apps again. Where are we going to go? QEMU XFPROT. Right, a virus scanner for Windows. So your yeah, Windows system's gone down the pan. You can use that and try and remember the viruses with that. I've used it a few times. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So there we go. QEMU. Right, you've got an ISO image on your disk. You can boot it with this. So that's also very, very good. This is what I was saying to you earlier, there's loads and loads and loads of apps on there that you wouldn't normally install on your desktop. But if you're running from a disk or a USB disk, this will be fine. So I'm scrolling up and down here, you can see the amount of stuff it's got on here. It's enormous. 
And as far as I can, I know there's more you can get anyway if you want to install it. Not that you would do, but only to a USB key. You could do that. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Partition tools again. Okay. Part magic, part party magic, should I? Or image even? I'll get it right. Photo recovery. Right. This is another good one I liked. You can find all your photos on the hard drive. Very, very good. Just checks for photos. So your system's gone down. It's gone kaput. You want all your pics off. But what system is it? Right, you've got a choice here. You get Intel PC, Mac, Apple, non-partitioned, Sun, even Xbox partition. Because a lot of people save stuff to their game systems now. So it might die and you want to get some stuff off the hard drive if you can. So that's cool. Another good little app there. I like that one. I might use that a bit later on another system I've got here that's actually died. So we'll have a look at that later. Anyway, back to the menu again. And I'm going to go back to apps again because that's where most of the stuff is. Over to partition tools. You can test disk, that's another one. Test the disk and see what the problems are with the disk. And it leaves a log for you so you can see. Lovely. Back traps again because that's where everything is really that you want to use. We'll go down, there you go, data recovery tutorial. Now this actually takes us to the Ubuntu section. Uh, not that's a bad thing, it's quite a good thing. But have a good read down here and it will tell you most of the stuff you need to know to recover your stuff from a partition on a hard drive if the system's gone belly up, shall we say. I nearly swore then. Very good. Anyway, we're coming near the end now. As I'm running out of time and I'm getting a bit bored now doing it. TrueCrypt's on there, that's also another good one. If somebody's TrueCrypted there, some partitions on their drive, you can get them off if you've got the key, obviously. If you haven't got the key, you can still get it, but I'm not going to tell you how because that might be against the law, mightn't it? Hmm. Anyway, you can set up and install Grub or Repair Grub with that as well. G part is here, that's another good one. And there you can see a little drive I'm just using it just for demonstration purposes. I'll put swap on there as well anyway, so that's hunky dory. That's cool. Well, I really like this. Uh, it's good to keep in your box. So do what I do, keep in your box. It will come in handy one day. Sneaky Linux out. Sponsored by beer. <laughs>